Welcome to another Mission Models painting tutorial. This new series will concentrate on painting wargaming miniatures. In this uh, series, we'll be concentrating again on the Flames of War series. Uh, these models here are from Battlefront Miniatures. As you can see, we've got some pre-painted models that we've done in the past. And then we've got a couple here, uh, which are unpainted, that we will be working on. Each video will concentrate on one model. Uh, we'll be airbrushing everything and we'll show you the workflow and how quickly and efficiently you can paint beautiful and convincing more gaming models. The first step in painting your model is to prime. Always prime your models, especially wargaming models since they're going to be handled a lot. And primer gives your uh, the paint, your final top coat, something to stick to. So let's get started. Our first step is using the Mission Models MMS-003 Gray Primer. We like to take an epoxy mixing cup, add 30 drops of paint, very quick, very easy. This is a one uh, ounce uh, epoxy mixing cup or 17 milliliters. We know that the eighth inch, uh, the uh, uh, 30 drops of uh, primer is at the eighth inch mark. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the Mission Models Thinner number MMA003, which is a four ounce bottle of thinner, and we're just gonna add six drops, maybe eight drops. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The paint and the primer is very, very forgiving. The Mission Models Thinner will activate the primer and give you a nice, durable, smooth finish. And that's all there is to it. You can see the consistency there. So we have our model here. It's a uh, Flames of War or Battlefront Miniatures uh, Yag Panther. We've got our primer here. We're using a Harder Steenbeck Evolution with a 0.2 needle nozzle. Now, 30 drops of uh, primer will uh, probably cover maybe eight or nine of these tanks. Now, what you want to do is we've already kind of propped it up on a little stand underneath. And in nice, even passes, light, wet coats. Prime the model. That's all there is to it. Quick and easy. Now we'll move on to the tracks. And what we're going to do is we're going to let this uh, air dry. And once it's dry to the touch, you can start doing your top coats. Make sure you get the back sides, the bottom. Mission Models Primer will not hide any details whatsoever. It'll dry like a second skin and is extremely durable. Again, you want to apply in light wet coats, not dry mist coats. So while our primer is drying off to the side, we're going to clean the airbrush. Cleaning the airbrush is very, very easy. It's important that you clean your airbrush between every color change. We use these uh, industrial squirt bottles. This is straight water. Right into the cup there. Dump it out. Spray a little through. That's all there is to it. Again, Mission Models Thinner into the cavity there. If you have a little bit of residual, just take a Q-tip and just kind of wipe it through, wipe it out. Don't use any kind of Windex, lacquer thinner, alcohol, alternative thinners, anything like that. Just stick with water and Mission Models Thinner. That's all you need. And you can see how quickly we've cleaned our airbrush. Clean. Okay, welcome back. So we've cleaned our airbrush we have the major components of our Yag Panther drying off to the side uh, in primer. And what we're gonna now do is we are gonna mix up our first uh, color coat, which is Mission Models MMP040 Tire Black. Now, we always like to start with 30 drops. It just gives us something substantial to, uh, to work with. And it's probably a lot more paint than what you need. So, you know, for, for this next step. So we've got 
30 drops of uh, paint here. Um, we're gonna take, again, the Mission Models Thinner, which comes in two sizes, uh, a two ounce and a four ounce. This is the four ounce number MMA003. And again, like we did with the uh, primer, we are gonna add about six drops, maybe eight drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all right. Again, like we said before, the paint's very forgiving. We basically just give you starting points and guidelines for successful and easy spraying. Now, the next thing that we're gonna add is our polyurethane mix additive. Uh, what the poly does is it adds durability to the paint, um, additional adhesion properties, and again, with the additional uh, adhesion and durability, it's excellent for uh, gaming pieces that are uh, handled on a frequent basis. So let's add six drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, it's very forgiving and easy to use. That's all you have to do. Okay, so paint's been broken down. We have our, our model parts. And we're gonna take the same airbrush that we used before. Always test before you spray. Spray through any residual thinner and water from your previous cleaning. And all we're gonna do is we are gonna spray our tire and track section with tire black. This way your tires are painted and then you can go in later. Once everything's dry, said and done, and you can paint your road wheels and tracks and you'll end up with a little extra depth on your tracks because we've base coated entire black. The back side there. Okay, so we've cleaned our airbrush again. We've painted our track uh, sections in uh, Mission Models MMP040 tire black as our uh, base coat. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move on to um, uh, Dunkelgeld uh, number MMP011. So let's mix it up. And again, we're mixing more paint than what we need for one tiny little model. But if you have multiple, uh, if you have a, a box set of five Panthers and Yag Panthers, you can paint all five, you can paint 10 uh, with this amount of paint. But again, 30 drops, we like to say that, uh, 30 drops, because it's a substantial amount of paint to work with and easy to mix and so forth. So we've got our, our Dunkelgelb. We're gonna add uh, one, two, three, four, five, six drops of, of paint. You can see it's broken, every, it's broken the paint down right away. We don't pre-thin any of our paint, so there's no shelf life. It's always consistent, and we're going to add some poly. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can add up to 12 drops of poly to 30 drops of paint. Just swirl it up like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to spray the upper, the upper and lower hull with the uh, Dunkelgelb number 11. And then we'll take out a different airbrush to start doing road wheels and so forth. Again, we always say, do a test shot before you spray. Make sure that you get rid of any residual water uh, or thinner that's in the, uh, the chamber of the airbrush. So let's get started here. Nice even passes. Paint's nice and opaque. And then again, if you have further questions on uh, using Mission Models Paint, we have other videos that show workflow, cleaning, mixing, and other related subject matter. Okay, so basically, there we go. And we actually still have paint in the, uh, in the, in the cavity of the airbrush. So we're gonna let this dry. We'll be right back. We're gonna then uh, take out a new airbrush or a different airbrush, and we'll start doing some of these road wheels and start mixing up colors and, and doing camouflage. Just let the paint naturally dry. Again, it's very forgiving, it's self-leveling. You'll end up with a nice, beautiful, smooth finish. All right, welcome back. So if you remember, we shot our lower hull 
and our upper upper hull in uh, Dunkel Gelb number uh, MMP 011. And then we have our track assemblies here, which we're going to start working on. We've switched airbrushes. We've moved over to a, uh, a harder steam back Infinity with a .15 needle and nozzle. We've put paint in there. We've got our Dunkel Gelb here. So let's, uh, let's get to it. And we're kind of on a funny angle, so hopefully you can see. Always test first. Make sure you don't have any residual water or thinner. In the airbrush. And you'll see we'll clean up the road wheels and the tires towards the end. Show you how to do that. Some very quick and easy washes. We're spraying between 10 and 15 PSI. And just take your time. Really quick and easy. And then we'll go in and we'll clean up, uh, you know, we'll do the tracks and all that. Get in there nice and tight. And uh, let's do this one too. So far so good. Nice and quick. So just do one more. Because the colors will alternate somewhat. I'm not sure if there's an exact pattern to how they uh, paint the road wheels. And let's just, uh, we'll just let this dry. No need to rush. Like I said, we're on a kind of a funny angle here, so you can see. All right. So we're gonna let these dry and we're gonna do a quick color change. You've. Uh, Already, we've already cleaned the airbrush a couple times for you, so you just do the same exact method, a little bit of water, and follow up with some thinner. Uh, we'll be right back. We're gonna let this dry, and we're gonna start uh, camouflaging our, uh, low, our upper hull and uh, painting the other colors of the road wheels. Okay, so we're back. We have our Yag Panther upper hull. We have our track assemblies. We have painted some of the road wheels uh, uh, with number 11 Dunkel Gelb. And again, of course, our upper, uh, uh, our upper hull. So now we're gonna move on to uh, MMP009, which is Olive Grun. This is the green that you'll see on a three-tone uh, camouflage pattern. So let's move our parts out of the way so we don't have any accidents. And we're gonna do the same thing. 30 drops. And the more you do this, the quicker you'll be able to count it out or do it by eye. And we will add uh, about eight drops of poly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Poly is optional, but we always recommend using it because it's awesome. And we've got thinner. So let's add uh, six drops of thinner. One, two, three, four, five, six. And let's add one more for good luck, seven. I think we've got eight in there, but it's all right. Let's just uh, mechanically stir it up. All you gotta do is just swirl it around the cup. And that's it. We're gonna use the uh, same airbrush that we were using before, a uh, harder steam back uh, Infinity with a .15 needle and nozzle. As long as you keep your airbrush clean, you'll have no clogging. So we will be right back in one second.
Okay, so we've got our airbrush. Uh, we've put a little bit of paint in the uh, cavity here. And like we always say, test before you spray the model. So we've got a nice fine spray pattern here. Okay, and I feel confident about uh, hitting the model. So we are going to start painting some road wheels. Again, we're on somewhat of an awkward angle here. Spray a nice low air pressure when you're doing fine lines. You don't have to necessarily try and cover everything in one go. Nice light passes for the best finish. Test again, make sure we're good. Two green road wheels here, letting them just naturally air dry. Go back in so you can get a little uh, build up there. If you apply too much paint, just let it naturally dry, it'll self level, and no need to panic. All the paint is triple pigmented, so you get nice solid coverage. And the key is always just taking your time, and you can kind of see how quickly we're moving along here. You can see our Dunkelgel and our green. We'll let these dry. Be right back, and we're going to uh, start moving on to the uh, uh, the upper hull of the Yak Panther. Okay, we're back, and if you remember, we uh, painted our uh, upper hull in Dunkelgeld number 11, and then we've got our track assemblies here, and we're going to start doing the camouflage uh, um, on the uh, upper hull. So let's uh, let's get started, and always test before you spray. And then you don't necessarily want to just try and cover it in one pass. Now we're off here at an angle, so so that way you can see. And again, don't try and cover everything in one pass. Let it dry. Get in there, and then Start filling in some of your voids. So again, just take your time. Be patient. We have to go back over some of the uh, previous passes. And we're going relatively quickly here. And when you're doing your fine lines or your fine detail work, you absolutely want to spray at a low PSI. You know, test always test first make sure your spray pattern is correct
And anything that you're not happy with can be cleaned up later. So, again, go back in, go over some of your previous work if you want. If you have any light spots or areas that you want to touch up. All right, so it's pretty good for now. I think what we're gonna do is start just move on to our uh, our red brown. Once you have your basic camouflage pattern down, then you can go back in and sort of assess anything, see what 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 else you might want to uh, touch up. All right, so we've got our. Our dunkle gelb and our green. So let's, uh, we're gonna clean the airbrush real quick and then uh, we'll move on to uh, the red brown. Okay, so we have our uh, Yag Panther upper hull drawing off to the side. So we have loaded the airbrush uh, with Mission Models uh, number MMP12, which is uh, rot brown, uh, red brown. And we're gonna do some of these road wheels here. And like we always say, Test before you uh, test before you spray, and we'll just get in there carefully. Take your time. It's okay if you get a little over spray because we're going to uh, clean that up anyways. And don't necessarily try and cover everything in one pass. Building up in layers is really the best way. And if you get a little bit of uh, paint buildup, if you're using a super fine needle and nozzle, you might want to go in there with a Q-tip and just very carefully wipe that needle off. Very carefully. All right. Looks pretty good. This has been drying over here. So we'll build up just a little bit more. And just take your time. And uh, we'll let these dry. And then we'll start doing the upper hull. All right, so we're back and we're gonna continue on with our Red brown camo. I'm just gonna carefully start to feather it in. Remember, just take your time. Mistakes can be touched up once you have your basic pattern down. May not be the most accurate paint scheme, but we're also not necessarily going for accuracy here. Basically just showing you the methods and 
how you can do it. And we put a little bit more paint in the airbrush there. Looking good. So we're just touching up with a little bit of uh, the olive grun here. Very easy to do. Because the paint is so opaque, it'll cover pretty much anything. And we'll probably go back in real quick with some of our base coat Dunkel Gelb. So we've gone back in. It's a little bit of uh, Dunkel Gelb, and we're just gonna kind of clean things up, just carve it back out just a tad any potential uh, overspray. So I wanted to uh, repaint the barrel. Wasn't happy with the uh, red brown on it. This is again, this is not you know, any particular tank from any particular, you know, uh, battle, commander, or anything like that. All right, so our next step is uh, we've got our, our upper hull uh, drying off to the side and we're gonna do the tracks now. We're gonna use uh, Mission Models Cold Rolled Steel uh, number MMM002. And we're just gonna pour a little in the airbrush just into the cavity, that's all we're gonna really need. Always test before you spray. And we're just gonna lightly dust in over our initial tire black. And you'll see it start to uh, kind of come to life here. Track color. Just carefully just kind of edge it in. We're going fast, so you're gonna wanna really just slow down, take your time. Side. Mm -hmm. 
And you know, if you're experienced, you can go fast. Otherwise, just kind of slow down, take your time. But we don't want to make a, you know, super long video. We want this to be kind of quick. So there's our, our tracks. You can just dust it on lightly so you get a little bit of the tire black showing through. Okay, so we're back. Well, we've uh, applied our uh, cold rolled steel on our tracks. It's looking pretty good here. Um, so next, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take uh, MMW003 uh, from the Mission Models Weathering Series. Uh, this is a transparent light rust. And we're gonna very lightly just the airbrush, just dust the slightest amount of transparent rust onto the tracks. Always test before you shoot the model. And a little bit on the edges there. Again, we're just doing a, a quick model. And you guys can take it as far as you want. The possibilities are pretty much uh, endless. But again, we just want to kind of show the workflow and how quick and easy it is. You don't have to brush tank, you know, hundred, uh, brush paint hundreds of, uh, of gaming pieces. You can just quickly airbrush them. So, all right, we've done that. It's very subtle. It's looking good. Okay, the next step is that we're taking uh, uh, Mission Models Metallic Burnt Iron which is MMM001. We've got a little in the airbrush here. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna, hold on a sec, we had a little bit of light rust in there still, so we're gonna spray that through, but that's okay. It'll still look great. That's why you always wanna make sure that your airbrush is completely and totally clean, but the iron will cover that rust and it'll give you a really nice, nice look. metallic kind of burnt out feel as it dries maybe hard to see and you could take the metallic burnt iron there and you can uh, dust a little bit of transparent rust over that and get all sorts of different types of uh, effects. And one other thing we're gonna do while we're here is we will take a little bit of cold rolled steel. We'll just put a little drop of it. So we'll take a little bit of cold rolled steel that we just uh, kind of put on a just a little drop over there, and we'll get this uh, machine gun, all right. Just kind of get some of the tools here. this a little of that and then we can weather over a lot of this so we've taken a little bit of brown uh, and we're just going to kind of get some of these tools real quick
right. I'm not really sure if there's a right or wrong brown for the tools or not, but looks good nonetheless. Okay, so we've painted our, our wheels, our tracks, and we've done a basic quick paint job on uh, our Yag Panther here, uh, the upper hull. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make a wash so we can clean up our, our, uh, our tires and wheels, uh, add a little depth to some of the details and so forth. So the way we like to make a wash is using Mission Models paint. We take the uh, MMA002 or three thinner and we add 30 drops. And then we take, we like tire black, so we're gonna add uh, one, two, three, four, five, six drops of tire black. And then we're gonna add water to the half ounce mark. And be careful not to splash onto the model there. Kind of stir that up a little bit. And we'll just start touching some of the details. Tar black is a nice neutral color. You don't want to use straight black. It's too much contrast. It's just not realistic. If you feel like you've got uh, too much uh, of the wash, such as in here, we can soak some of it out, lighten that up a bit, and then you can just watch it flow to capillary action. It's quick, easy, fast. Start touching the uh, tires. Get that to flow around there. Just quick. These will look great on the game table. If you need to, you can just let that dry. You can just see how it just flows. We like to use uh, what's called a liner brush, so that way we get more detail and we can have more control. Over our work. And just make things stand out here and there. But, you know, you don't want to overdo it because then uh, it'll just be just too much contrast and you want it to be nice and subtle, especially in this size. Your tires don't have to be perfect. You will get road grime on it and so forth. So we'll let those dry to the side and then we'll, uh, now we put a little stand on here so I just cut that off, I just snapped it off, doesn't matter, it's on the bottom. And let's just start touching some of the details, just real quick. You know you guys want to get to the game table, so. You can just see how it flows. Again, we're going fast. Try to keep the video short, or short as we can. And one thing we like to do 
before we're done is we like to thin down our our base coat which would have been which is the dunkel gel and then go in and tie it all together tone things down a bit now we haven't really let the paint thoroughly and properly dry so we're pretty much doing it all in real time so you want to really let your paint dry you know a few hours it's the best way for maximum durability and adhesion really let it dry paint technically is still somewhat soft What's nice about Tire Black, because it's a neutral color, it will work as a wash for pretty much any color or on any subject. Because it's not really black, it's more like a rubbery gray, green, rubber black. Very different than just straight black, but we call it Tire Black. And you can go in and clean up any bits of wash that you don't like. You can take a Q-tip or a brush and you can just kind of wipe it away quick and easy. You can see how things are starting, starting to kind of come alive a bit, a little depth. A little around the, the muzzle brake, a little bit. Just kind of touch around the tools and so forth. Get overages there, you can just take a Q-tip or whatever, just kind of wipe some of that that up. But again, we need to be careful here on this particular model because uh, paint's not technically 100% dry, so we really want to avoid any kind of lifting or removing you know, while it's. So one thing we've done was we've taken a nice broad brush and we've dipped it into our wash and we're just going to do some, some quick downward streaks. And really the best time to do this is when the paint is really thoroughly dry. fast. Alright, we're going to let this dry. We'll be right back. So we're back and what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna add uh, just a real, just quick, quick general filter. Uh, we're gonna take here uh, MMP uh, 019 Dunkel Gelb Late 1944. It's a lighter version of the early uh, Dunkel Gelb. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add, I don't know, one, two, three, uh, four drops there. Again, this is supposed to be very, very thin can get a dusting on there and we're just gonna add some thinner and sometimes you know you have to use your best judgment on uh, how far you want to take it there's no real ratio on doing uh, you know, 
filters, various things like that. We're gonna have to take a little bit of uh, artistic license. So we've got it in the airbrush there. Again, always test first. And this is how we're gonna kind of tie it together. And it's meant to be very, very subtle. So just because you don't see something happening, doesn't mean that it's not. So remember that. And we're kind of toning things down, toning down some of the washes where they might look a little bit heavy. So you don't want your washes to necessarily be real dark. You want them to be subtle. This filter is nice and transparent, and it will add, uh, you know, a shift in tonality. And various different types of looks. So as it dries, you'll start to see it kind of come into its own. And you can use this to tie things, you know, just tie everything together. Kind of mellow out your, your paint scheme. We can go in. Make our yellow pop a little bit, but not too much. We want to try and keep things realistic. A lot of times weathering is way overdone. Pay attention to where your shadows are, things like that. Where the sun might hit, uh, hit the model, or the real vehicle, I should say. Go a little, you know, it might be more sunlight hitting the top versus lower, uh, lower parts of the model, or the vehicle, I should say, the real vehicle. And you can see, you just want to let that dry, and then it's a case by case basis. Look at your work and just go slow. Tie it all back together. So basically what I mean by tying it back together is you're sort of blending everything. This way all our, all our tools and stuff like that aren't as uh, pronounced. It's all there, you can see the wood and the, the cold rolled steel that we used, but it's just a lot more uh, subtle, in other words. So we're not even really covering our washes, we're just toning them down. And if you decide to go overall, you just want to go from a distance like this. Yeah, looks good. Okay, so we're basically done here with our model and we're gonna do one quick last thing and we could really go a lot further. And the thing about it is we're gonna do more videos uh, with these uh, Battlefront Miniatures uh, tanks. So what we're gonna do is just add a little bit of, uh, of wear uh, to our tracks. We're just using Mission Models Aluminum. We are not, one thing we, never really do is we don't dry brush. But in this case, uh, just because of what we're, we want to achieve and just hit the high spots, is we're just gonna dip our finger in here. I like to do that just because I get more of a, a feel for what I'm doing. And we're just gonna hit just some of the high spots. Don't overdo it. You just want to go very light, right? That's it. Just light. So you get a small, small amount of reflection. That's it. And if you want to add a little wear around some hatches, you could just take this here. Very lightly. You want to be very careful. keep it. You may not be able to see it here, but believe me, 
it will reflect. Tone it back down a tad. Take our brush that we were doing the washes with and just kind of wipe it back because you really don't want you don't want it to be glaring at all. Uh, just briefly, and we're wrapping this up, adding a little bit of uh, wash back into our, our tracks, kind of tone that down a tad, and we'll basically be done with this project. Yeah, it's got a nice look to it. You can add a little bit of uh, metallic to the top of the gun barrel. Not that there's wear there, but it'll just kind of give it a little reflection under the lights and it'll look awesome. So, back in with our, our tire black. Just run a little bit of that over our tracks. A more. And let's just say we're done because honestly, we could go forever. So, we'll be right back. All right. So this wraps up our painting session of this Battlefront Miniatures Yag Panther, uh, which goes with the uh, Flames of War game. And the point of this tutorial was to show you the workflow and how quickly we can produce a model using basically just an airbrush and a paintbrush just for a couple basic details, doing filters and uh, how quickly and efficiently you, we can do this. So one cup of uh, primer would uh, do maybe, you know, 10 or, you know, 12 of these, and you can just move along at a rapid pace. Do some basic washes, uh, filters, slight, slight weathering. Again, you can go as, you can take it as far as you want. Everything takes time, practice, and patience. Don't get frustrated, just slow down and uh, create your own style and signature. It's about having fun and having some awesome looking tanks on your, uh, on your table. So anyways, we have more videos coming. We'll be doing uh, more German tanks, allied tanks, all sorts of stuff. So we hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for sticking with us and uh, it was great working with you. All right, have a good one until next time. And if you have further questions, you can check out our website at missionmodelsus.com. We've got a lot of in-depth tech support and other videos on YouTube to check out about mixing paint and so forth. Anyways, again, thanks a lot. Have a good one. See you next time.